the graph of x cube? Okay, like this. Then we make the graph of. Okay, now I'll do it with a slight change. Can I write this as y plus y is equal to x minus one the whole cube? Y plus five is equal to minus x minus one whole cube. Correct? Okay. Now can I do one thing? Can I first do y plus five? Will that be fine? That means this graph will come five units down. So it will look like this. Alright? So this gap is five units down. So now this position is zero comma negative five. Is that right? Next. What is the next step that I have to do to get minus x minus one? Change x with minus x. So if I change x with minus x means I am reflecting this graph about y axis. Again I am repeating the rule. Changing the sign of x means reflecting the graph about y axis. Changing the sign of y means reflecting the graph about x axis. So if you reflect it about uh, y axis, this is how you see the graph. Is that fine? Correct. Next, I want. So I already got y plus five is equal to this. So now I'm going to change my x with x minus one. Okay. Yes or no? This is as we are saying negative x minus one cube. Correct. So changing x with x minus one means this reflected graph will shift one units to the right. So now your final result would look like this. One comma negative five. It will come at one comma negative five, so it will be like this. So this point will be one comma negative five. Is that fine? All of you have understood this. Okay. Moving on. If I extend the Concept to x to the power of 4 now. So, quadratic we saw, cubic we have seen just now. Now, let's talk about bi quadratic. In bi quadratic, in fact, you can try it by plotting some points. In bi quadratic, you will realize that the graph would be of a similar shape as a parabola but slightly more flatter. Flatter at the bottom. Okay, I'll show you on GeoG. Okay. Uh, what I was planning to plot? Y is equal to x to the power 4. So y is equal to x to the power of 4. Okay. This I'm erasing off. Okay. Can you plot y to the extra power of 2 also? I'll plot the same here also. Okay. Now, I will plot y equal to x square simultaneously. Now you will see something happening over here. You see that? If you see in the minus 1 to 1 zone, something strange is happening. After 1, if you see, the blue one dominates the green one. After minus 1 also, the blue one dominates the green one. But between minus 1 to 1, the green one dominates the blue one. Dominates means higher than the blue one. Why is that so? Dominate means higher in value. See, if you zoom it. The green one is above the graph of blue one in minus one to one domain but post one and pre minus one the blue one is higher than the green one. Why is that so? Because it's, uh, it has a higher power. So? No, higher power means higher values? Because we, we uh, one is all decimal. So we will 
Absolutely, Ananya. Very good. See, what is happening when you talk about x to the power 4? When you are between minus 1 to 1, you are only dealing with fractions there. So, which is the higher value? Minus 1, half square has a higher value or half to the power 4 has a higher value? Half square. Half square has a higher value. So, x square graph is higher than x to the power 4 graph. Higher means for the same x value, y value is more for x square. Yes or no? So, that's why in this zone you would realize that your green graph is higher than the blue graph. But the moment you cross 1, that means you are no longer dealing with decimals, you are no longer dealing with fractions. Then let's say I take a 2 value, then 2 square will become lesser than 2 to the power 4 and that's the reason why now blue graph becomes the boss. Correct? So between minus 1 to 1, x square is the boss, but after that, before minus 1, x to the power 4 dominates. Can you predict the trend if I do x to the power 6? Please draw in your notebook these three graphs y is equal to x4, y is equal to x square, and y is equal to x to the power 6 on the same xy axis. And carefully tell me what do you observe in the graph. That observation is very, very essential. Yeah, How will the graph come? I'm predicting it will yeah. come higher than the blue one, yes. but it will be the least. least least of the three in this interval, again it will be higher than the, this one. Are you getting that? Yes. Let's see, let's see when we plot it. Y is equal to x to the power of 6. Yes. See this. Now this dark green one, you see that? It's even higher than the blue one, post one, and even higher than the blue one, pre minus one. But in the interval minus 1 to 1, this is the lowest. That means it will be more flatter. Okay. That means if I put 8, it will be even more flatter. Yes. If I take it to the power 100, you will almost realize that it's like a like. U. Shall I, shall I show it to you? So let's say y is equal to. Y is equal to x to the power, let's say I put 1000. More like a box. Not even box. You see that? It's become so flat that you almost realize it's becoming parallel to the x axis and then becoming like this. But it's actually flat. But it's not actually flat. It's, the it's actually differentiable here. Uh, now there is a concept called differentiability which will lead in higher section, I think you are doing that. There is no corner actually here but you perceive it as a corner because it is very very small. Yeah, that turn is very very drastic over here. Okay. A similar nature you would observe even when we plot the graph of x to the power of 5. So x to the power of 5 graph Okay, I will show you two graphs simultaneously I will show you x to the power 3 first This was the graph of x to the power 3, right? Correct? How do you expect the x to the power 5 graph to be? Flatter, absolutely It will be appearing like this Let me take some other color It would appear like this At the same interval. At the same interval, absolutely. And this point will be minus 1 plus 1. Are you getting it? So it has become more flatter in the minus 1 to 1 zone. So after 1, it starts dominating. Before minus 1, it starts dominating in terms of magnitude. But between minus 1 to 1, x cube is the boss. Are you getting this point? Okay, so let me show you again on GeoGebra. Uh, I'll just delete all these unwanted ones. Okay. So let's say the graph of 
x cube first I will draw. Y is equal to x cube. Okay. Okay, this is the graph of x cube. Now, if I draw the graph of x to the power 5, see what is happening. Do you see that? This graph is the graph of x to the power 5. Okay, so after 1, x to the power 5 dominates x to the power 3. But in the interval minus 1 to 1, x to the power 5 graph is more flatter. That means it is having a lesser value in magnitude than x cube graph. What will happen if I put x to the power 7? Even more flatter. x to the power 9? Even more flatter. So x to the power any odd power, let's not a very, yeah, let's power a very large odd power. Y is equal to x to the power 1001. Typing in the Oh my god. X to the power Do you see that? It has become so flat that it's looking like a but actually it's not flat. It's not exactly not flat. There's a smooth turning over here, but that turning is having a very high curvature. Can you zoom in? It doesn't, it will not show, the graphic is not that good. Is it understood how it works? Okay. So with this we will move on quickly so that you can do a lot of questions from your worksheet also. We will move on now to the graph of Functions of this nature, 1 by x, 1 by x square, 1 by x cube and all. Now y is equal to 1 by x is basically called a rectangular hyperbola. Now what's the hyperbola? Opposite of that. No, no, no. It's something that you will study in your conic section chapter, so I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it. It's just that uh, you'll see this in your thermodynamics as well. Uh, you may not have done thermodynamics in your class 10, but you will be having it in class 11. There is something called isothermal curves, where you will plot the graph of P versus V. It will come out to be a shape, which is now what I am going to draw in front of you. So, a rectangular hyperbola looks like this. Now, listen to this concept very very carefully. This graph is drawn in this way because you can see for yourself that when you put x value as a very very small positive quantity, let's say 0 0.0000001, correct? When you reciprocate it, what will happen? It will become a huge value. So when you are very close to 0 but on a positive side, this value will become very very large. Of course, I cannot go and draw there. So I've just shown it by an arrow. That means having a very large value. Okay? And as you start increasing the value, let's say from 0 0.001 you make it 0.1, then it becomes 10. So at point 0.1, let's say here, it is having a value of 10. Okay? Let's say 1, it will have a value of 1, then it's not to this scale. Okay? So as you keep on increasing now from 0 0.0001 to let's say 1 lakh or 1 million, it starts falling down and down. The value of y will start becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. Now the important point here to be noted is that you can never make it reach zero. This value will never become zero. Right? That means it will never touch your x-axis. So we say this phenomena as your y-axis is asymptotic or your x-axis is an asymptote to this function. It is spelled like this. Asymptote. What is asymptote? Write down. Asymptote is basically a line which is at a finite distance from the origin 
Write down definition of an asymptote: a line which is at a finite distance from the origin and appears to touch the curve at infinity. And it appears to touch the curve at infinity. So in this case, your x-axis and your y-axis both will be asymptote. Normally we call this as a horizontal asymptote. We call this as a vertical asymptote. People who would be writing calculus, AP calculus exams. This asymptote concept is very important for you. There are questions where you will be asked to plot these asymptotes. Is it fine? Now, what happens on slightly left to zero? Let's say I choose negative 0 0.000001. What will I get? I get a very huge negative, negative value. That's why the graph dips down all the way to minus infinity. Here it was going to plus infinity, right? And as you start increasing in a negative way, for example, you now put minus one, your value will of y will come out to be at minus one, your value will come out to be minus one. At minus two, your value will come out to be minus half. Okay. Yeah. So it starts decreasing down in magnitude as you go towards more negative values of x. That's why the reason for this shape. Again, all the rules that we have discussed is equally valid to this as well. 